Hey, thanks for visiting Duckman Cycles of VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle, also known as Eleanor. There she is outside. I just pushed her out of the garage a bit ago, and there's the floor pan for her. Now, something I've never really touched subject on is, uh, well, what am I going to use for a transmission? And the answer is, I've got a proper late model transmission right here that needs to be cleaned up. It came out of a running car, as far as I know, and uh, I've had it now... I'd say about two, three years. And actually, I pulled it from the car myself. I never got to drive the car, so I don't really know what kind of condition it's in. So it's kind of a gamble cleaning it up and uh, actually preparing it to go in this car anyway. So today we're going to put it up on an engine stand. And yes, you can mount a Volkswagen transmission on a Volkswagen engine stand just the same. You just turn it around backwards. Uh, once we've got it up there, we're going to flip it over a few times and clean up all the little nooks and crannies on it as best as we can. Then we're going to try to get a coat of uh, high temperature paint on it. Once that's done, we'll reinstall the mounts and accessories, and we'll put it back in the chassis. I mean, as simple as that, really it is. This is kind of going to be a quick video, I think. I mean, how hard is it really to, you know, clean a transmission? <laughs> as always, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button, that way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out my Facebook group page, Duckman Cycles Video Garage. Join the group page, there'll be discussions on this and the Doodle Bastard, and you know, whatever else I got, or wherever anybody else used to share. So if you uh, are interested in mechanical stuff, particularly related to Volkswagens and motorcycles, I mean, that's the place to go. And if you have questions for me, that's the place to post them. If I don't answer them, somebody else sure will, and I'll chime in as soon as I get around to it. So uh, as always, you guys are invited. If you'd like to email me, you got something personal you want to ask, uh, it's, uh, send me an email over at duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Once again, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. Stay tuned. More to come. Boom. All right, we're back after a little message from our sponsors. <laughs> this is a little higher octane than I normally mix, and I did mix a little bit heavy, so I'll be slipping it real slowly today. I'm already having trouble feeling my lips, and I've only had a little bit, but, uh, yeah. Gentle it's going to be. Mm-hmm. I'd share with you, but, you know, you guys, yeah, sorry. I tried. I mean, you know, I'm a friend. I tried to share. <laughs> Getting back on the subject here. Down below here is my transmission, or transaxle, which is actually the proper definition of it. And right here on this transaxle, we're going to put my engine yoke. And what you do is you get your starter bolt ready to go, just like that. You put the little bolt through the hole. Real simple stuff. You know, it doesn't take too much imagination to know how this is going to work. There we go. All right, then down here on the bottom, you got to take a bolt, and this bolt is the same size as the stud that normally goes through the bottom side of the transmission here. And you want to put a spacer on it, only in my case because I used a bolt that's just so entirely long. Slide this through both the yoke and the transmission, and then on the back side you attach the nut. And you don't really need to overdo these. If you plan on leaving it up on this stand for any length of time, I would suggest that you do tighten them with a wrench. But if you get them finger tight, this is usually good enough to do the job. And they've already got gunk on me. Unbelievable. <laughs> Alright, with that said, now it's time to uh, move the transmission case over to the engine stand. And there it is. One transmission mounted on an engine stand. Couldn't be done, huh? <laughs> Alright, we need to remove some accessories from the transmission. The first thing is going to be removing the nose cone mount. Get that out of here. There's actually two bolts that go through the back side of it that remove it right from there. We're going to try to, uh, you know what, I can leave the switches. Assuming that the switches are probably good. The two pin one is the backup light one. That looks appears to be this one right here. And the single pin one is the one for the fast and safety belt light. And that's kind of nice to have because if you ever use a remote starter on the car, and you accidentally leave it in gear, you can actually wire it up so that switch 
will disable the remote starter so that way it won't start it'll fail instead over on this side we're going to remove the ground strap we're also going to remove the rear transmission cradle here that does not need to be on there and in fact oh geez this was put in by the previous owner and he didn't even tighten the bolts down on there and those urethane mounts that you see on there are kind of crappy these things are known for splitting i'm actually going to replace those with just some rubber oem ones the oem ones are just a uh, much better last a lot longer so that should be good to go on there we got the whole thing cleaned up it looks like there's just a lot of dirt on everything just from it sitting about now somewhere i have a freeway flyer transmission <laughs> I've got about five transmissions around the yard, and uh, I'm sure you say, you know, these things are so big and so heavy, how do you lose them? Well, it's not so much that I lost them, I know where they all are, it's just I don't remember which one is which. I should have put a label on it. I've got transmissions out the ass. Let's go ahead and get this one cleaned up. Uh, I have to do a couple things to it. I also have to remove the um, CV joint mounting cups here, because I'm putting bus sized CV joints on here that's going to accommodate the 944 style axles that are going to be required on this setup. And I'm hoping those fit. I can't really find a whole lot of write-up on that on the internet, so we'll see how that works out. But uh, we'll get to that bridge when we cross it. I like that better. We're going to get to that bridge when we cross it. <laughs> Maybe there's another bridge. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing apart, clean it up, and we're going to try to read the transmission code also, which is kind of crusted over, but we'll get that read and figure out exactly what this transmission is and uh, what would be inside of it if it were stock. And I'm going to presume it's probably stock. I think that's pretty safe to say. But we'll find out in just a minute. Thanks for watching. The first nut actually unscrewed by hand before I even started the record button on the camera. Yeah, these are 15 millimeters. I don't know what size they normally are. I think they're actually much smaller than that on stock. But I don't remember. I've got a plastic bin next to me to throw all this stuff into. So if you're going to do this type of work, it's probably a good idea that you do the same thing. Alright, let's go ahead and turn this transmission upside down. Now if there's any fluid in this and you work too slowly while it's upside down, it may leak out of the weep hole. There actually is a little breather weep hole on the uh, top side of the transmission somewhere. I don't remember where exactly, but if you work too slowly, yeah, it'll flow out. If you're quick though, you might only get a little bit coming out of it. Yeah, it's up on the nose cone. There's a hole right up here. That's it. That's where your breather hole is. And yes, the fluid will leak out of that if you leave the transmission upside down for too long. And as you notice, it just got a little wet. Not a big deal. Need to get inside the bell housing next. And these are nuts that are inside of here, but these actually look like bolts. And they're going into the urethane transmission mount. Now I have no experience using these urethanes. I've never mounted these things before probably be a lot smarter if I put a ratchet on this instead. I don't know how many turns this is going to take to get it out of here. Okay, there is a nut on the other side. I thought it was a captive nut. It is not. So I will have to get a socket and put it on the underside. Alright, got me a 13 millimeter socket here. Let's see what we got on the back side. Hmm, it looks like it's going to be smaller than that. Of course! Why would this ever be matching sizes? No, that would be a stupid idea. 13 on top for sure. Underneath, something different. Looks like it might even be an 11. Maybe a 12. This is bullshit. <laughs> Alright, as it turns out, it actually is a 13 millimeter in the bottom, but the problem was is that the urethane bushing is so crushed from being tightened onto the transmission that I couldn't get the socket into it without some additional force. So anyways, now it's coming out. And this is exactly why you don't use these Eurosame transmission mounts. This thing is only about three years old. It was mounted in there brand new and it's already starting to develop cracks. And that's what happens with these. They just break. They just break. Same reason why you shouldn't use a steering, steering coupler. Of course, they're never going to bend this far, but you can see how easily it's just splitting. Just like that. Gone. So, yeah. Stay away from these. Don't use them. They're crap. fucking problems. Sorry for getting a little pissed off a minute ago, but it seems like every time I grab for a tool, I keep grabbing the wrong sizes. Yeah, anyway, 13 millimeter ratchet top and bottom is what was necessary for this one bolt, which is just so recessed and it's really hard to get to. 
And this one I can see that because the damn, oh, this thing is cracked really bad. These things were never even run, never even run once. There was never an engine mounted in this car. Well, I shouldn't say that. It was an engine case in here. It was still never run. Come on, get in there, there it goes. Jeez. The last one's gonna be the hard one. Ah. Feels like the threads are nice and rusty on there. Now, as I had said, these transmission mount bushings were never run, not even once. The most abuse that they got was there was an engine case mounted on here when I dragged it to the Volkswagen show almost exactly a year ago. Look at the cracks that have developed in it just from sitting. And it's been sitting in a garage. These things just, just, just pulled themselves apart. I can't imagine with the heat and the vibration that these would have received, what would have happened to them. They, they, they'd be toast. It would be gone. This is just real bullshit piece of product here. Don't buy these. Do not buy these. Junk, warning, garbage, I don't care what brand they are, these are trash. Stay away from them. Likewise with the steering couplers, by the way, because they don't reinforce them. They call them a rag joint, but the uh, urethane ones do not have a rag on the inside of them. And uh, of course, it's a round piece with four holes in it, used for steering, but it's made from the same material, and they crack the same way. And when they let go, guess what happens? Your steering wheel does this, and your car does whatever it wants to do. And then you crash and then everybody laughs at you. So yeah, stay away from the urethane bushings when it comes to engine mounts and when it comes to your steering coupler. They're pretty good in a lot of other places though, like inside the uh, trailing arms that I put in there. Those are good because those are under compression and not under shear, so they don't split. But these are under shear forces. That's just terrible. That is just terrible. Say bye to it, junk. All right, I see that we already have a nut here loose. The previous owner told me he replaced this at the same time as he put those urethane ones on the back. This is not a urethane front nose cone mount, so I don't know if he actually did or not. And I'm not even quite sure what kind of shape it's in. When I actually pull it off of there and clean it up, we'll see. Oh, I thought that was a 13 millimeter. I guess it's not. Looks like it's gonna be a 15. And these are kind of staggered like that. One is a little higher than the other. Not quite sure why Volkswagen did that. I'm sure in their infinite wisdom they had plans of their own. And I always have trouble getting the tool onto that upper bolt. It always turns out that the outside diameter of my wrench is a little bit too big. Sometimes you can just scrape some dirt out of here and you get enough clearance. If, of course, dirt is what's causing the issue. The Type 3, I had problems with this too. Getting a ratchet in there with a socket is really difficult. It's just too big. Yep, that's not going to work. Let's see if I have a socket that'll fit in there. This one's uh, this one's gonna be a pain in the ass. All right, this was a little tricky. I had to dig through everything that I had until I found an Indian-made 15 millimeter wrench that had a smaller outside diameter. And as you notice, not by much. This sucker is just a little bit smaller. And it actually fit in there. And rah, with a little bit of pressure on it, I can actually get the nut to turn. And this may be the tool that I used to put together the uh, Type 3 nose cone mount. I don't remember. I know on the uh, nose cone on the Type 3, I didn't have this many problems. There it is. Nose cone mount. That one actually doesn't look too bad. What I'll do is I'll put a screwdriver in it and try to pry it apart a little bit. And usually then it'll show its cracks if it does have any. Or I could just be a genius and just replace it. <laughs> okay, ground strap is on the other side. Here it is. And that one is just a 13 millimeter wrench right here. Pull that right off of there. One ground strap. I'll put that nut back on so we don't lose it. This transmission isn't all that dirty. Either someone has cleaned it before or it has seen some really, really light usage. It's been a lot of years on it though. <laughs> all right. That starter's gotta come off of there. And these can be tricky while it's mounted. So am I going to be a dildo and drop it on my foot? We're about to find out. <laughs> okay, got to take this nut off the, the hell. It's supposed to be a 17. Looks kind of, yeah, it looks small. Okay, that's completely wrong. That is supposed to be a 17 millimeter nut, but like everything else on Volkswagens over the years, People do some really stupid things to these cars. This is something I will correct and I'll put it to the correct nut that's supposed to be on there. That way if I ever have to take it back off again, I can use one set of tools. Okay, I gotta loosen up. That's a proper 17. You know people do some dumb stuff when they've had a drink in them, right? <laughs> Thank you.
Wow. There was a mud dauber's nest inside of there. Okay. Put that nut back on. Fell down into the pine straw on the ground here. Now people tell me to cut these trees down, but they provide so much shade in the warmer months, so much. It keeps the sun off my house during the hotter part of the days. And sure, they drop pine straw and they kill the grass in the backyard. And they've even blanketed my roof. And if you watch one of my more popular videos over on VV.VV, you'll see that they actually clog my vent pipe up on the roof. In the end, I said because of how much benefit they provided from the shade, there's no reason I would want to cut them down. There we are, mounted, mounted. I'm gonna snug this sucker up a little bit. And that's where we're gonna be. There's this little piece here. I think we're gonna pull that off and we're gonna throw it in the sand blaster. Shame all this stuff is gonna be up under the car where people aren't gonna really appreciate it. This little bit here is the Bowden tube mount. That little guy right there. To the CV joints, we know we're not going to use these. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to clean the grease out of them because it gets all over your pants. So I've already made a mess out of myself. I probably should have done this first. Just get the damn grease out of these. There we go. Now if I get grease on me, it'll be just a little bit rather than getting it all over your clothes. I hate that. And once this is all cleaned out of here, this little rag that I'm holding on to is actually going to go right in the trash can. And then one piece for my hands. People always wonder, when they watch me work, or even if they're helping me or I'm working on their car, why my hands stay so much cleaner than theirs do? And one of the reasons is because I keep wiping them. I always find a rag and I keep wiping. There's always a rag hanging out of my pocket. Like you see a lot of the lesbians wearing in the bar, the back pocket. I actually use that rag in the back pocket for wiping grease off my hands. Sure, I could wear gloves, but it seems to be a waste of time for me because I always get holes punched in the gloves and I end up with grease all over my hands anyway. All right, we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and get the wire brush out and see if we can clear off that serial number and find out exactly what transmission revision this is. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here and see what we got. Now there's a part number on there and it says H, but I don't think that's a transmission code. Usually I start with an A or a B. Once upon a time I had one transmission with a code that didn't exist on anybody's lists. It was in a long axle, swing axle, uh, Beetle. I forget what it was, an AK or something like that. It was just wrong though. Oh, there's the code, I see it. Looking in the wrong spot, this is an AH. Right there, AH. And if I'm not mistaken, an AH is one of the earliest IRS transmissions. I think it's a lower geared ring and pinion in it. So anyway, it'll be a higher RPM. This is not a freeway flyer transmission, is probably what I'm trying to say. This would be a good transmission to drive with, but if you're gonna be putting in a bigger engine and you're gonna be running on highway speeds, this probably won't be the best candidate. Anyway, I'm gonna continue cleaning this thing up and then we'll attack these cups and get those things removed and switched out with some uh, bus compatible ones. And actually, they are Thing cups, believe it or not. Uh, things actually use bus size CV joints, but they fit to a Beetle transmission. It had a bunch of other goodies inside of it, like a Ziff, um, what do they call that? A, a, a Ziff limited slip differential, which is clutch based, German style. This transmission, of course, would not have that unless somebody did something to it. We're gonna finish cleaning it up, and like I said, change these cups out. We'll show that on video, but there's no reason to show all of this brushing especially when my phone is going off and it is a work day so I'm gonna have to check it and see if I have to go anywhere but you guys get the point if you've been watching my videos for a while you know that I get called to work a lot when I'm trying to get something done <laughs> anyways thanks for watching we'll be back in a bit all right I've given it a soak with some degreaser and uh, gave it a good scrub down it's probably not going to be a hundred percent spotless but uh, the idea was just to get paint to stick to it and get it clean or clean enough. Time to rinse. So anyway, we'll get this thing rinsed off and we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I think it's time to paint the transmission. It's not perfectly clean, but it's clean enough that nothing's gonna flake off of it. And being that it is a transmission, it's gonna be under the car where you're not gonna see it anyway. And probably one of the best colors for a transmission is a flat black. And the reason why flat black is because flat black will actually radiate heat. 
better than any other color wheel, and that's one of the reasons why stock Volkswagen uh, valve covers are actually flat black. It actually came that way from the factory. So let's see what we can do about making it black. And now it's black. How about that? Okay, got my nuts and bolts hardware and all my transmission mounts. Here's your nose cone mount. Here's the two rear mounts. And I selected some nuts and bolts that I know that work on here, as well as some washers. It turns out a lot of the nuts and bolts that run these stupid things, um, I don't know, they must be American threaded or something. They just didn't fit anything properly. There was something wrong with them. So we're not going back to those bolts. And uh, of course we're not going back to these stupid urethane mounts either that split. What pieces of junk these things are. This car was, like I said, never even run on these. Never. It just sat in the garage for a little while. And they rotted through. Anyway, garbage gone. Okay, we got to put these mounts onto this transmission. They go on just like that. Then you come up inside of here and you run your nuts on. Okay, we've got the rear ones in place. You see the nuts? They go right through the bell housing just like that. They're attached on the bottom. The suckers are ready to go. Put the cradle on. And next we have the front mount. The front mount has two offset bolts on it. And these can go one of two ways. They can either go with the horseshoe down or the horseshoe up. And I have not found any documentation as to which way is the right way. So one can only assume. <laughs> Typically, logic would dictate that the horseshoe would be up so that way the transmission's weight would sit down inside of it. But when you have it upside down the other way, of course when you get on that throttle and you dump that clutch, that transmission's going to want to go like this. So maybe it's supposed to be the other way, so that way that force goes up into the horseshoe. <laughs> really tough to say. I don't know. I have not found any documentation on that. So if anybody would like to spread their insight, you know, share with me. It's quite a curiosity here. I've always put them with the horseshoe up and I've never had any problems, but uh, there might be a right or a wrong way. And of course, one of the right ways is put the washers on the other side of the studs. But yeah, you guys get the point. So input is, is accepted here. I'm probably going to have to pull this transmission back out anyway at some point because uh, there's some more chassis work that I'm going to be doing in the future. But also, if this transmission should be bad for some reason, and we may have to take it back out. Oh, I also don't have my, my rubber nose cone seal yet. So when I put this thing in there, it's probably going to have to come back out just so I can put the seal back in. I don't know why the seal hasn't come yet. It's just that it keeps getting shipped later and later. And now, of course, we had a hurricane. So guess what that means? Yeah, i got to wait on it. And the show is uh, right about a week and a half away. So <laughs> hopefully a part arrives in time that I can get this thing worked on. We'll see. We'll see. If not, it goes to the show without the rubber. Nobody will see it anyway. Now the nuts that go on the front here, they're actually real skinny, real slim. And the reason for that probably is, is because it's really hard to get a tool up inside of there. And uh, if you can remember when I was taking this thing apart earlier in the video, I was having some trouble getting a wrench or a ratchet up in there because the casting, the shape of the um, nose cone mount uh, on the transmission case, it's just, it's just impossible to get a tool in there properly. So anyways, I have a box end wrench that has a, a skinnier surround to it has a smaller uh, smaller diameter and it just makes it in there so anyway we'll snug those up and get that thing straight we'll put our cradle on the back here and then we'll get ready to put this transmission into the chassis all right our front mount is now installed ready to rock and roll on the back here we have to put that cradle underneath you remember i threw that in a sand blaster to clean it up well it looks a little different than it used to all right this transmission is ready to mount and you might recognize that color. <laughs> Figured I'd do something a little extra under there. Needed to be painted anyway, so I made it match the master cylinder. Once again, one of those things you're probably never going to see, but I know it's there. This transmission is now effectively ready to mount. Okay, we are just about ready to install a Potamus the transcription. Uh, I'm going to drop that sucker right in here. But before I do any of that, I'm going to lay a blanket or something over these frame horns because everything is very nicely painted. And I take the lazy man's approach when I install one of these. I actually just stick it in there and let it rest on the frame horns. So, of course, that's going to make it susceptible to scratches. So I'm going to pad it up real nice and do something with it. Also up here in the front nose cone area where the nose cone goes through, this is the seal that's currently missing that I don't have. But I had to cut a radius in the bottom of it because where I put the torsion adjuster in there's a little piece of square bar that goes across and it actually was blocking the hole in such a way that I couldn't get the transmission in. Anyway, it shouldn't be a problem anymore. It has been moved. So I just simply cut a little bite out of it and it should be good to go. In the back, I've got the two bolts right there that go on the ends of the frame horns. So everything is in place and ready to go. All I gotta do is throw a blanket down and uh, throw that transcription in place. 
let's see how this turns out. Almost forgot to add, I also knocked the uh, strut bars off there. I just connected them from the bottom where they connect to the back of the frame horns. That opens up the area so the transmission should slide right in place. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing done. Okay, here we go. Just a matter of putting the bolts in the back. noticed a problem. This apparatus is not compatible with my transmission cradle. We've got a little problem to deal with. Well, I didn't take this into consideration before, but the lower part of the uh, strut here isn't going to fit inside of that particular transmission cradle. Now, this is going to be incompatible. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just not going to work. I'm going to have to switch out with a different cradle. That's a damn shame that I painted it all up all nice like that. Um, or I just got to cut pieces out of it. And, you know, I, yeah. I don't really like the way that went together at all. Well, anyway, we're not even attaching those struts yet. Let's go ahead and pull that blanket out of there just so we can get a good photo of what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to think that one out. And maybe I have another strut brace somewhere I could use. Or maybe I have an alternative mount method. I'm sure I've got something. We're going to dig through my junk. I actually found a good use for those piece of shit urethane bushings. <laughs> Over on this side too. Currently it's holding the transmission up so I can remove that mount. I think that's going to work just fine. <laughs> that's what time it is. Okay, getting a good look at the transmission cradle here as well as the lower strut mount. The bolt holes line up, even if I don't cut the bottom. It looks like I need to cut a 90 degree out of here, just a triangular piece. And I think the rest of it will bolt together just fine. That's not too big of a deal, really. And I looked up these mounts to see if there's another mount that didn't have this, this shape or this contortion, but apparently these things are pretty much all the same. I went ahead and I looked at a set of hard, solid mounts also, so replace those, and there's no rubber inside of those. And these, of course, would, would give a lot of vibration to the body and make a lot of noise. But uh, looking at that just the same way, you'd still have to cut it and clear it. So no matter what I do, I'm going to be doing some cutting. So I might as well stick with the blue piece that I've gotten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a notch out of this right here. And then I'm going to, well, paint it. <laughs> Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Just, just grind right through here. And then we'll bolt this thing all back together after it's get another coat of paint on this, this general area here. Again, not a big deal. It's one of those things that's a little annoying. I wasn't expecting that, but uh, it doesn't need to be a big of a deal. It doesn't need to be that big of a deal at all. So we'll just cut a couple notches out of it and make it work. It's kind of interesting that uh, these notches that were made by the factory are at the same spot. So over here I'm going to have to cut that 90 and then grind around this little radius. Over here I can cut out the 90 and stop. It's not going to matter over here. They're a little bit different on both sides. Anyway, let's go ahead and hit that with the grinder. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Alright, another thing that I noticed here is up front where the little cage goes that attaches the shift shaft to the transmission. There's no room to put this here because the adjusters are in the way. Now how I can resolve that is just, well, turn the screws and lower the adjusters. <laughs> I mean, that's the first, foremost, most obvious way. But to permanently keep them out of the way, I have to disconnect the torsion bars, turn them probably one notch on the outside and put everything back together. And this is the reason why I didn't torque anything down yet. I knew that something wasn't going to align properly. I knew it was going to have a problem. So if you've been following this video series, remember I started bolting things together and I left everything snug, not absolutely tight, very easy to come back apart. <coughs> so what I have to do here is I'm going to have to turn those torsion bars a little bit and move those things so that way I can drop it back down some. I don't know where my final ride height is going to be. I don't have all the weight in this car yet, so I'm probably going to have to turn those torsion bars once or twice more. Probably once the engine is in and once the body is on the car, I'm going to have to play with them a bit more. But uh, that's not too big of a deal. Right now it's approximately at maximum ride height. I think it can go up a little bit more. Let's see, actually it'll go up, yeah, considerably more. So what I need to do is I need to actually take those um, little spoons that are in there 
well, I'm not actually going to adjust the spoons. I'm going to turn the uh, torsion bar on the outside. I'll pull the spring plate off, turn it a notch, and put it back on. Effectively lowering the car. And what that will do is it'll lower the angle on those little spoons in there. So effectively, they'll bottom out more easily. In the future, I'm probably going to do something different with those. Those spoons are probably going to go away. I'll have some other setup or arrangement in there, but that's something for the future. After the car show, when I pull the body back off, I'm going to do a little more suspension tweaking and stuff under here. I've also got to do some work to the front anyway, so I'll be doing some more to this before the car gets finalized. And then, of course, sometime while this is getting finalized is when the body will be getting painted, and then we'll finally put it all together. But I must say, nice painted transmission in there. Sure does look good. What do you think? Haha! <laughs> Little cutting, little grinding, little ugly. I don't really care. It's gonna be under the car. I mean, I painted this thing excessively anyway. Sure is a pretty color. It only really, really shines when the sun hits it just right. <laughs> so it's gonna be under the car, even if I jacked it up and put it on a lift where people could see it. Again, the sun's still not gonna to get to it anyway, so you're never really gonna appreciate it. It's true metal flake color. Oh, once it's back on the car too, I'm gonna to straighten out that bend in it. Apparently some idiot had put floor jack underneath it. That's usually what that's from because they don't just bend like that on their own So when I get it back in the car, I'll put a set of um, Wide flappy gripped vice grips there and bend it back into shape a little bit Being gentle of course so as not to chip the paint but I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and uh, Once that dries up then we'll bolt it back on the car Well, thanks for watching. There's a couple things that we need to get to today that I didn't get around to and one of which is replacing that throw out bearing and I've got a brand new throw out bearing right here. So we'll replace that just before I put the engine in. The other thing I need to do is get the uh, shifter shaft coupler put in there. So thanks for watching very much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other channels such as VV the Duck VV as well as Skeeter the Duck. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles of VW Garage on the Facebook. Join that group page. There's always a discussion on my projects and anybody else's projects that they want to share. Uh, always, always, you guys, thanks for watching. Really thank you. I've had a lot of new subscribers this past week, uh, actually past two weeks, I've had just a ton of new subscribers. I think I've expanded by about another 10 or 15 percent. Uh, my numbers have just gone up dramatically. And the wave actually started just before I started to do stuff with A-Bomb, and he actually caused it to spike up even further. So I don't know what's going on, but uh, for some reason I, I've reached a higher level of influence on YouTube, and I'm really glad for that. And again, I couldn't have done it without you guys. I really couldn't have done it. So I really thank you guys for, for watching and, and liking my project. Really. You know, I mean, I made a lot of progress on this thing this year, and uh, I said it's a shame that most of the progress that's going to be seen at the show is actually up underneath the car when nobody's really going to appreciate it quite so much. <laughs> but as you know, the height adjuster spoons in there unfortunately aren't going to allow me to do that, so I have to make some adjustments to the torsion bar. That's about an hour's worth of work. It's not too bad when everything's all apart just like this. So we're going to cut this one off now because it's starting to get dark, and I'm about to have dinner. We're about to go out and get some chicken wings tonight. That's right, I'm going to make this thing a little bit bigger. 